שלום כהולויים לה יהו בהשם יהו שם. זה דבר נצל אל זה ג'י אמס נאנס יואקים. Peace and bless you, brothers and sisters, that listen to for the elected church of the firstborn, call him Laya Basham El Shah. And I um, uh, was going to do this video last week, but I just remembered it actually. I showed up in my recommendations, you know, Nate, which we've seen him openly teach hell, openly on live teach hell. So he was in another podcast spewing the same damn poison again, man. Hell, man. Right? Which is an imaginary place. Where you burn forever and ever and ever. <laughs> a mythical place, man. And funny thing, a lot of people who believe in Christianity and Islam still believe in this lie, man. Right? But, you know, due to the power of the internet, research, people researching it, there's it's all kind of articles out there now, man. People telling you now, it was St. Augustine who created that lie, man. He created that doctrine. All right? Because he barred it from pagan beliefs, going back to Greek mythology. I'm going to pull that article out, actually, man. All right? But let me read these two precepts. This guy, man, this guy's just getting more contemptible every day, man. That's that's the, um, detestable in the spirit, man. Okay? The scripture says that's vile. Actually, let me get to Isaiah 32. All right? Isaiah chapter 32, verse 6. It says, For the vile person shall speak villainy, and his heart will work iniquity. To practice hypocrisy and to utter error against Yahweh Bashem El Shah. That's what these guys are doing. That's teaching these false doctrines, man. The scripture says they're vile, man. Okay? They're wicked, man. All right? They're no different than Aisha. They're base men. Right? Even though they know the truth. It says, and it's hard. Let me keep reading. To make empty the soul of the hungry. And will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail, man. Right? Which a lot of these priests we use for Aisha. It's going to wicked Israelites as well, man. You make it empty in the soul of the hungry, man. Because our people are hungry and thirsty for what the truth they sold us. Right? We know but the vast majority of them are blinded. You guys are instruments of keeping them blinded, man. Keeping them lost and dumb. You false prophets, man. The scriptures say if there's a false prophet among the people... I, the Lord, set him up, man. So at the end of the day, you can't be too mad. You guys are just playing your part, man. See, but us, for the apostles and elders on down, you brothers and sisters that listen, right? Teaching the true doctrine of Yahweh Bashem Yahshua. When you read further up, it tells you that our eyes, the Most High opened our eyes, man, and our ears to hearken to the truth because we were lost, Right, following uh, Christianity, Islam, the ways of this world, these different religions and these strange doctrines. Right, no longer anymore, man. And those guys who supposedly woke up, the scripture says, those are the circumcision. <laughs> oh man, the like scripture says, um, you know, they teaching things that they ought not, man. And we know why, because of that filthy lucre, man. Right, money, charters, right, which you drown the word, man. All right, showing that you guys had a what a covetous eye. All right, you mind earthly things, man. You're not about Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah and his kingdom, man, and waking up his elect. That scripture says this. Let me get Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 13. It says, Better is a poor and a wise child, right? Because wisdom is above everything. That's so the scripture says you could be poor, but you have wisdom if you have that wisdom, man. Okay, a.k.a. the fear of the Lord. Right? That's going to lead to life. The scripture says, then what? Better is a poor and a wise child than an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished or corrected. And that's what you got over there at the IUI seat, man. Right? King Nate. Right? This guy exalted himself, man. Now he called himself general. Right? He can no more be admonished. He can't be corrected anymore, man. See, let me get this article on hell, though. OK. This guy also named is Paul. I think Mc, McKellen, he goes into this concept on hell. He said he studied it, researched it for years, and he came to the conclusion that it does not exist in the Bible. All right. That concept, let me read this here. It says hell as a lake of fire for eternal punishment does not exist in the 
Bible, man. It does not, man. We're going to go into the words there for the uh, word hell. All right. Let me jump straight to it. Right. He came to the conclusion. He researched it for years. Uh, let's go. It says in pagan cultures, they believe that hell was the underworld and it ruled by the God of the dead, which, you know, in Greek mythology, that's Hades. Right. The so-called the brother of Zeus, Poseidon. OK. <laughs> that's what that concept goes back to, man. Greek mythology, man. All right. It says. It says aside to be honest, when you look at the Bible as a whole, it is quite apparent that this construct of hell was man made belief and was not from any divine source. Aside from not existing in the Bible, it is not supported by any of the entirety of the gospel is not. So where did it start? Nearly five centuries after the death of Jesus or Yahweh Shai, right? His name is Yahweh Shai, man. And that's another thing they go off for there at the IUIC, man. Christ and Jesus because of the bag. See? And he's taking things out of his spirit, man. He's just waxing worse and worse, man. So St. Augustine became the primary instigator in, pro in promoting eternal hell with the Western Church. Okay? So St. Augustine, all right? He's one of the major uh, authors of that time, actually. He wrote, I think, various books, man. But he was, he was a demon, man. Like most of our forefathers in the uh, Byzantine Empire, man. They were creating all sorts of doctrines, man. Right? They created the con they created Islam, man. All right? But let me read this though. It says, um, uh it says the threat of this eternal hell was another ideal way for Catholics and Christians to increase power and profits. Sadly, the ancient Greek philosopher Celsus once said that hell was a good way to control the behavior of the unwashed masses, but that no wise man believed in it, <laughs> right? Nobody that has any common sense would believe in that stupidity, man, right? It says the foundation of this hell is quite pagan, has no ordination whatsoever in any scripture. Now I'm going to go to the words he breaks, breaks it down, um, um, hell, all right? The actual word that's there, which we broke this down many times before, man. Okay, let me see here. He says, um, uh, yeah, let's go here. It says, so technically the word hell or possibility of suffering after a physical death does not appear anywhere in the Old Testament. All right. It says, which is why most versions of the King James Version dropped it from their translation. All right. But what's the word there for hell? It says the Hebrew word there that they have for hell is Sheol, which means the grave, man. We broke this down countless times, man. Okay. And when you jump on down to the word in the New Testament, hell, the word that is Gehenna is a physical place in Israel in the Valley of Hinnom. So even he saw that, man. All you have to do is look it up, man. Okay, that's what the elders always say. Go back to the Hebrew, go back to the Greek. You know, go into the concordances, man. That's what we have Bible dictionaries, man. The scripture says to study thyself, um, study to show thyself approved unto the most high. If you're gonna call yourself a teacher and a leader, man. So how the hell are you gonna believe in that, man? Hell. And if you did simple research, you would see that it goes back to Sheol. Or it goes back to Gehenna. Right, and that's the, the Lord talked in parables, similitudes, man. Like I Shaw's, his heaven is our hell. We in captivity, we're suffering, man. Now we're killed all the day long, as it is written. All right, this this place is called what? The Valley of the Dry Bones. It's also known as what? The the place known as the Shadow of Death. Right, this place was built of our blood, man. So this is our hell, man. And he's in his heaven, a.k.a. rulership. It's not talking about a place where you burn forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, man. That's nonsense, man. And Satan is down there. But when you read the book of Job, you will know that's a lie, man, because the Most High and Satan was having a conversation. All right. But let me read um some scriptures. Um, right. Where does your judgment play out at? Let me get Proverbs 30 and 16. Let me get Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. 
right? Because the scripture says, um, we did videos on that where you go to when you die, you return to the spiritual realm, right? You don't go in no place where you depend on what you did, did evil. You go in some place underground and you your spirit burns. Your spirit is made out of pure fire, man, right? Your judgment plays out on the planet Earth, man. That's what scripture tells you. The dust returns to the earth and the spirit returns into the most high that gave it, man. In Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. But let me get um, the scripture I said I wanted to get. I think Proverbs 30 and 16. Let me get that. All right. Let's get that. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 16. Unbelievable, man. Man, that's supposed to be God. Um. Yeah. And men are supposed to be masters in Israel, like the Lord told Nicodemus, but you you a master in Israel, and you don't know these things, man. Right? You go back to the old school and you preaching this nonsense, man. So it says it's Proverbs chapter 30, verse 16. Mm, let's start 15. The horse leech have two daughters crying, give, give. They are three things that are never satisfied. They are four things say not, it is enough. What are the three things or the four things? That are never satisfied. Verse 16. The grave. Okay. That's the main point I want to get out, man. We look up that word. The grave is Sheol. is never satisfied. Man. People die every day. man. So according to these idiots, man. There's a new amount of souls burning in hell right now, man. <laughs> oh, man. What you going? We did videos on reincarnation already. You know, that's another topic, man. All right. So. The grave is never satisfied. People die, literally die every day, man. Right? Every single day in every country, man. So it's just nothing but souls burning down in hell, man. So where does your judgment play out on the planet Earth? Let me get Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. Let me get the precepts people try to use for hell, man. Let's get Ecclesiastes chapter three. Verse <clears throat> um, Ecclesiastes 3.16 it says and moreover I saw under the sun the place of judgment where are we judged on earth under the sun we're all under the sun the place of judgment is on earth the physical realm man. right you die like it says Ecclesiastes 12 and 7 your spirit goes back to the most high then he pronounces judgment man then you're born back again and your judgment plays out on the planet Earth, man. That's people always ask these questions. How can this little kid die? And how did this guy born with this illness or this disease or born with this certain disability? How? Because of the sins that they committed in their past, man. Scripture says, who shall perish being innocent? Nobody's innocent. All right. Scripture tells you, um, uh, that have been has already been okay the scripture tells you that there's um there's no new thing under the sun not even us we all been here already man right and we did videos of that before uh you know our scripture tells you to uh how you call it, it says i therefore put your remembrance though you once knew this we all once knew this truth. Everybody that's in it, man. It's already in you. That's the word educate means. We used to draw from within. The truth is already in you, man. Right? That's what Yahushai said um, in Matthew, the 19th chapter. He that followeth me in the regeneration. This is that generation because the apostles had to come on this side of the world, man. And they are back. Prophesying in the belly of the beast. That's when they're going to get the kingdom. Right? So let me get this next precept. Get Job the third chapter. Let's get it. Right, let me just get a little insight on what's going on. Job chapter 3, verse 1. I'm going to jump on down. After this day, Job opened his... After this opened Job his mouth and cursed his day, the day he was born. And Job spake and said that the day perished when I was born. In the night which it was said, there is a man child conceived. Let that day be darkness and let that the most high regard it from above. Neither let the light shine upon it. 
So he was catching so much hell, man. He said it was, it was best that I died, man. Curse me the day I was born in this flesh, man. This corruptible flesh, man. Right? I was better off not being here on earth, man. Right? Verse 11, he said, why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me or why did the breast that I should suck? For now should I have lain still and been quiet. I should have slept than I had been at rest. Okay. He said it was better I died, man. So I could be at rest. Free from being troubled. Free from being oppressed, man. All right. That's what we are right now in Babylon, man. Right. You're free in the spiritual realm, man. Right. You're no longer in bondage. All right, let me read on. It says, <clears throat> with kings and counselors of the earth, which built desolate places for themselves. So he's at rest with the kings, the counselors, or with princes that had gold who filled their houses with silver. Everybody returns back to the same place, man. Or at a hidden, untimely birth, had I not been as infants which never saw light. This is the point, verse 17. There the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary be at rest. There the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. The small and great are there and the servant is free from his master. Everybody's at peace in the spiritual realm. Man. So he says the small, the great, the prisoner, the oppressor, kings, counselors, rulers. Okay. The wicked, the righteous. All right. They're all at what? At rest, man. Where does a judgment play out on? On earth, man. This is where the most high gets you, man. That's why it tells you John the fifth chapter, Acts the 24th chapter. There's going to be a resurrection of the just and is there going to be a resurrection of the unjust, man. People that did wickedness, the Lord going to raise you up in the flesh and you're going to taste the second death, man. Right, your spirit not gonna burn in some mythical place underground. That's stupidity. And Nate and these other guys that's teaching that, they know better than that, man. But for the right price, they'll teach anything. All right. And you had wicked kings in Israel, man. Um, Saul. How come Saul didn't burn in hell? And he was dealing with mediums and witches, necromancy. And Samuel told him, he said, "Listen, you gonna die. David gonna get the throne." And you and your son, Jonathan, y'all going to be here with me in the spiritual realm. Ahab was one of the most wicked kings in all Israel, man. Did he burn in hell? So I've got to get that priest. I think it's first Kings 22. I think it's like 40 around there. Right, Ahab, man, he was a, a simp ass dude, man. His wife Jezebel was killing the prophets, persecuting, pursuing the prophet Elijah. Through the prophet Micah in prison? Did he burn in hell, man? When he, I think he was going against the Armenians. And he died in battle, man. Because Micah prophesied that. Let's read. First Kings chapter 22, verse 35. It says, and the battle increased that day. And the king was stayed up in the chariot against the Syrians and died at evening. And the blood ran out of the wound into the midst of the chariot. He's going to Ahab, man. He got smitten in battle. All right. Micah, I told him that. Uh, <clears throat> and there was a proclamation throughout the host about the going down of the sun, saying every man of the city and every man to his own country. So the king died and was brought to Samaria and they buried the king of Samaria. Right. And one of one washed the chariot in the pool of Samaria and the dogs looked up his blood and they washed his armor according to unto the word of Yahweh, which he spake. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab and all he did and the ivory house which he made and all the cities that he built, are they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Ahab slept with his fathers, the rest of his forefathers, man. Then he slept with his fathers, man. You say anything about him going to some place and burning forever, man. That's nonsense, man. And he was a wicked king, man. Saul was a wicked king, man. But like King David said, let me get Psalms 109th chapter. I'm going to get Matthew 25, which people, um, which I just broke it down briefly. But I've seen one, one retard post, um, Matthew 25, 41. So I uh, get it. 
Let's get Psalms 103. Let's get in there. So no, there's no place where you burn forever, man. This is King David. It says Psalms 103. It says, Blessed, bless Yahweh Bashim Yasha, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless Yahweh Bashim Yasha, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Amen. All right, let's jump on down to the point. Verse 8 Yahweh Bashim Yasha is merciful and gracious. Slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, right? Which that means what chide means to what to uh, to, uh, to um to reprimand or to rebuke, man. Right. So he's not always going to what punish us, man. He will not always chide. Neither will he keep his anger forever. So then you're gonna burn in some place forever and ever and ever, man. Scripture King David said, "What? He's not always going to chide, man." We come into our blessings right now, all right. And out of right to that, um, in the kingdom, we gonna be um ruling forever and ever, Amen, man. Even the two thirds gonna come back, man, and taste the kingdom. So it says, all the seed of Israel are gonna be justified, man. All all Israel shall be saved, man. Because why the scripture says, what he will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever, man. Okay, the most high not gonna be angry forever, man. That's crazy, man. So in year one million, you still got souls burning down there, man. According to idiots like that, man, since the beginning of time. Just burning right now. It's crazy. Now, what's the scripture people like to use? Matthew the 25th chapter. See one guy use it. Right? So Matthew the 10th chapter, we know it's going into what? Gehenna. Right? Soul and body in hell. That's going into what? The second death. Right, the nuclear um, holocaust, man. Right, the resurrection of the just and the resurrection of the unjust. But let me read Matthew 25. Um, Yahweh Shai goes into this parable, man. Right, on the ten virgins. Um, then he goes into, um, there's a point I want to get out. Matthew 25, verse 14. I'm going to jump to the point. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country. That's Yahweh Shai. That far country is a spiritual realm. Who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And he gave five talents gave five talents to another two and to one. We all have different portions of the spirit. Different gifts. Okay. Um, Different abilities, man. All right. But now there's a point I want to get out. The guy who sat on his talent, who did not care for the sheep, which a lot of you guys don't. All right. This is what Yahweh Shai did. Verse 31. When the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he shall sit upon the throne of his glory. And he shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. Which the separation is start right now with the word, man. Okay. But when he's coming, he's bringing his angels or the reapers. Coming to gather his elect. And the ones, especially in America, the ones that's not beamed up, you Israelites and you nations ahead, you're going to be burned. We're going to read it. Um, And he's going to that wicked servant now. Uh, verse 40. And the king shall answer and say, verily I say unto you. Uh, let me see. Let me start up a little up. No, no, let me read verse 41. Then shall he say unto them on his left hand, so those on the right hand receive the kingdom that was prepared for them before the foundation of the world. Depart from me, cursed into the everlasting fire. This is a scripture people like to use. Prepare for the devil and his angels. So they say, oh, see, this is talking about hell, right? The devil and his angels. What is this talking about, man? Let's go to Revelation 19 chapter. Let's get Revelation 19. People get caught up on certain words, man. The word devil means deceiver. All right. They don't always talk about the spiritual demon Satan. Man. Just like the Lord rebuked the Pharisees and Sadducees and said that ye of your father, the devil. Hell, he rebuked Peter and said that um, get thee behind me, Satan. Right. Or the adversary, man. Anybody come against this truth. 
You're Satan. All right. You guys are teaching lies. You're devils. You're deceivers. Right. But let's get Revelation 19 chapter. Let's talk about the devil and his angels. We get math. Revelation chapter 19. Verse. Let's start from 11. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that son upon it was faithful and true and was righteousness and he do judge and make war. Yahweh Shai. And we know this going to what? The chariots. We were called the UFOs. His eyes was a flame of fire and his head had were many crowns. So he's coming to take everybody down man. Right? The kingdoms of the world will become the kingdoms of our Lord man, as it is written. Revelation 11th chapter. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. This goes to Isaiah the 63rd chapter. That's how much killing he's going to do. And his name is called the word of the Most High. That's his title. And the armies which were in heaven followed him with white horses, the chariots, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth caught a sharp sword that concentrated heat, those lasers. And with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and tread at the winepress of fierceness and wrath of the Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture, on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now let me read... Um, it's coming down to the point. I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to the fowls that fly in the heaven, fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great power, man. Yahweh, man, this is his supper, man. That he may eat the flesh of kings, right? America's that altar, man, that sacrifice, man. Right when Yahweh shall come, the day of the Lord, it says, "Flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great." And I saw the beast. Right, we always go into this, man. We know the beast is going into what NATO, the EU, and and the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him. That sat on a horse and against his army. This is going into what? The devil and his angels. So there's going to be a fight in the air, man, when Yahweh shall return, man. Okay. It's talk to, it says, scripture says what? The kings of the earth and their armies gather together to make war against him. Who's him? Yahweh Shai, man. And against his army, man. That's what Yahweh Shai is talking about when he returns in Matthew, the 25th chapter. All these nations, the beast, okay, and these various armies around the world, they're going to come together to fight Yahweh Shai. And if you know anything, like we broke down that beast is a kingdom. You read that in Revelation, the 17th chapter, okay? You had the dragon, which came back as the beast with seven heads and ten horns, right? Different kingdoms, man. The whore that sits on it that controls the beast is NATO. Right, but it's going to tell you eventually the beast is going to turn on the whore. But let's read on though. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles, the Pope, and all these religions underneath him, and which he deceived them that had received the MOTB, the mark, okay, the RFID, and them that worshiped his, his image, right, his NWO, his great re. Okay, these were both cast alive into the lake of fire with brimstone, man. The second death, man. The nuclear missiles, man. Right? Anybody that's joined to this, man, they're going to get caught up in the heat, man. With that fire, man. They ain't talking about a place where you burn. for. So this is going to take, this battle is taking place on earth. So that's what he means in Matthew, the 25th chapter, where he goes into the devil and his angels, man. It's not talking about a place where Satan is right now. Satan is in the spiritual realm right now, man. The most high controls Satan. Satan is a hitman. How would like we know that? Like we said, you read the book of Job, man. Okay. When we talked about Saul and how he started bugging out. The scripture says an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. All right. So, man, you know, all these, um, uh, you know, the scripture says to stay away from these Jewish fables. Right. And hell is one of them, man. All right, so hopefully this lesson was edifying. Let's say, Kolim Laya, Obashim Al Shah, Shalom.